today's video, we're going to learn about sandstorms, how they form, why they can be dangerous, and some amazing facts you probably didn't know. A sandstorm, sometimes called a dust storm, happens when wind picks up loose sand or dust from dry ground and carries it through the air. In deserts or dry areas where there is little vegetation, the soil is loose and has nothing to hold it down. Then, when wind gets strong enough, it can lift particles into the air. Sandstorms might look sudden, but they follow a clear pattern that depends on the weather and the land. Here's how they usually form, step by step, in a way that's easy to understand. First, the ground has to be very dry and loose. Sandstorms don't happen where the soil is damp or where plants cover the land, because roots and moisture help hold the soil in place. In deserts or dry regions, the ground often has a layer of fine sand or dust that's easy for the wind to lift. Next comes the wind. Strong winds or sudden gusts start to blow across the dry surface. When the wind is fast enough, it pushes and lifts tiny grains of sand and dust off the ground. The strength of the wind decides how much material will move. Gentle breezes can shift sand along the ground, while powerful gusts can send huge clouds of dust into the sky. Then, the particles start moving in two main ways, in a process called saltation. Larger grains of sand bounce or hop along the surface. They knock into other grains, sending even more sand into the air. In suspension, very small particles of dust get lifted higher and stay floating in the air for longer distances. These are the particles that make the sky look hazy or orange during a storm. As the wind keeps blowing, the storm begins to spread and grow. More and more particles join in, and the dust cloud can move across great distances. Sometimes, when new gusts or thunderstorm winds hit the area, they push the wall of dust even farther, making the sandstorm wider and stronger. Finally, the storm comes to an end when the wind weakens. Without strong air currents to hold them up, the heavier sand grains fall back to the ground first, followed by the lighter dust. Slowly, the air clears and the sand settles into new places, sometimes forming small dunes or covering plants and roads. Sandstorms are not just dramatic to watch, they can also be harmful in several ways. When sand and dust fill the air, visibility drops so much that you can barely see in front of you. This makes driving, walking or flying extremely dangerous because people and vehicles can easily lose their sense of direction or crash. The fine dust in a sandstorm can also cause breathing problems. Tiny particles enter the lungs and can irritate them, especially for people who already have asthma or other respiratory issues. Sand can damage buildings and machines too. It acts like tiny grains of sandpaper, scratching windows and paint, clogging air filters, and wearing down engines or moving parts in machinery. There are also health risks beyond breathing problems. Dust can carry germs, fungi, or chemicals that cause infections or allergies. Repeated exposure to these storms can even harm farmland by covering crops or removing nutrients from the soil. Over time, sandstorms can change the land itself. They can strip away the top layer of soil, the part that plants need to grow, leading to desertification and making it harder for vegetation to come back. Dust doesn't only cause problems, it can also bring surprising benefits. When dust settles in new places, it often carries important minerals that help ecosystems thrive. For example, winds from the Sahara Desert blow vast amounts of dust across the Atlantic Ocean, and some of it lands in Central and South American rainforests. That dust contains nutrients like phosphorus, which helps keep the rainforest soil rich and fertile. In parts of the ocean where there isn't much iron, airborne dust provides the missing ingredient that tiny ocean plants, called phytoplankton, need to grow. This supports marine life and helps balance the planet's carbon levels. Even in places like Hawaii, dust from faraway deserts has been shown to boost the growth of crops such as plantains. In northern China and the central United States, ancient dust deposits known as loess have created some of the world's most fertile farmland. These fine, yellowish soils were formed over thousands of years by windblown dust and have supported agriculture for generations. However, when plants that hold this soil in place are removed or destroyed, those same lowest areas 
can once again become sources of new dust storms. Sandstorms are most common in very dry areas where there's lots of loose sand and not much vegetation to hold it down. The world's dustiest regions include North Africa, especially the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Peninsula in the Middle East, parts of Central Asia, and Northern China near the Gobi Desert. These areas have strong seasonal winds that can lift huge amounts of sand and dust into the atmosphere. In the Sahara, sandstorms, locally known as Chirgui or Kamzin, can last for hours or even days, carrying dust thousands of kilometers away. On the other hand, there are places on Earth where sandstorms almost never happen. Rainforests, coastal regions, and areas with thick vegetation rarely experience them because the ground is moist and plant roots keep the soil in place. For example, the Amazon rainforest and much of northern Europe have almost zero dust storm activity. In these humid environments, the soil simply doesn't dry out enough for strong winds to lift dust into the air. Some of the biggest dust storms in Earth's history have been massive enough to cover entire countries. One famous example is the Dust Bowl in the 1930s in the United States, when poor farming practices and severe drought allowed dust storms to sweep across the Great Plains. These storms darkened the sky, ruined crops, and forced many families to leave their land. In recent decades, large storms in China and the Sahara have also spread dust across oceans, reaching as far as the Caribbean and even Europe. Sometimes, dust storms appear in places where people least expect them. For example, strong winds can carry fine dust hundreds or even thousands of kilometers from deserts to regions that normally have clean air. Dust from the Sahara has been detected over the Atlantic Ocean, reaching South America and occasionally even the southern United States. There are also special types of dust storms called haboobs. A haboob happens when strong winds from a thunderstorm push down to the ground and spread outward, lifting up huge walls of dust. These storms are common in parts of Africa, the Middle East, and the southwestern United States, especially around Arizona and New Mexico. They often look like a solid wall of sand moving quickly across the landscape. Another related phenomenon is the dust devil. Unlike sandstorms, which cover large areas, a dust devil is a small whirlwind that forms on clear, hot days when rising air begins to spin. Dust devils are short-lived and usually harmless, but they can still pick up loose sand and debris as they twist across the ground. They often look like mini tornadoes and can be seen in deserts and even in parking lots on hot days. Sand and dust storms don't just happen on Earth. They also occur on other planets. Mars, for example, is famous for its giant dust storms. Because Mars is so dry and has a thin atmosphere, wind can easily lift fine dust from the surface. In 2018, a dust storm on Mars grew so large that it covered the entire planet and lasted for several weeks, blocking sunlight and even disabling the solar panels of NASA Opportunity rover. When the Mariner 9 spacecraft arrived at Mars in 1971, scientists couldn't see the surface at all because the whole planet was hidden by another global dust storm. Mars also has its own version of dust devils. These whirlwinds are much bigger than the ones on Earth and can reach several kilometers high. They move across the Martian surface, leaving dark trails where they remove dust. These dust devils help scientists study wind patterns on Mars and how the planet's thin atmosphere interacts with its sandy surface. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you know other interesting facts about sandstorms that I didn't mention, please write about them in a comment below. And remember that you can help our channel to grow by just pressing the like button and by sharing this video with your friends.